Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I can't even remember the last time I ripped a CD. I used Napster, but only after it went legit. Of course, its software is still questionable. One of the ugh, worst music managers on the planet. Um, used Urge, and then it went away, or it melted into Rhapsody, and that's how I came to be using Rhapsody for my music subscription. Um, I really don't have a lot of local MP3s. My experience has been all here. I mean, I do travel, and I do get around, in at least town, and uh, anytime I listen to music, it's usually here. So a music subscription service makes wonderful sense for me. And I have tons of CDs, tons of them, but I can't even remember the last time I bought one. It's been at least a, at least a year since I picked up a, a physical CD. It's, I digest everything uh, digitally, and I'm sure at some point in the future, the idea of a CD is just going to... Does anybody out there own cassette tapes? Anybody still can even buy cassette tapes anymore? I mean, like, with music on them? I'm not even going to ask about LPs because, you know, that's... Audiophiles love their LPs. They love their vinyl. I'm not going to go into that right now. Suffice it to say, I don't think LPs are ever going to go away. I've got a uh, top five list for uh, fixing or cleaning up a disgusting, as he writes, music library from Monet. And he says he just subscribed to the YouTube channel and was watching the videos in the live stream. And he says he's hooked! So Monet, if you're out there, glad to be an addiction for you. Hopefully a healthy one. He says, this is the top five list on how to fix up a messy music library. If it's already been covered, my bad. Maybe it's just the organization freak in me, but I can't stand when I see it a bunch of music files with missing or inaccurate tags that are tossed all over the place. Personally, all my songs are MP3s, but some of these programs will work with other formats as well. So this is probably assuming that you've ripped CDs over time. Let's just assume you've gotten your music legally. It's another reason why I don't keep a lot of MP3s locally because uh, it's just easier to go click and play it in the browser. Again, I, I like Rhapsody. I know it's real service, but it, it, I don't have to run anything but a browser window and a plugin that stays out of my way when I don't need it. Yeah, I like Rhapsody. I've got the coupon. Click the link if you want it. So this is what Monet suggests. Number one, fix those tags. This is probably the most useful thing you can do for a messy music library. Having inaccurate or missing ID3 tag info makes it difficult to find your music on your computer or on portable devices. This is especially the case when dealing with large libraries. A great program that Monet uses, he notes, is MP3 tag, found at mp3tag.de. It processes information very quickly and has a bunch of small tools to fix file tags. When you first start the program, you can use file name to tag feature, which automatically grabs information from the file name and throws it into the artist and title tags, the ID3 tags in the MP3 file. Once this is done, the rest is pretty simple. You can either manually enter the rest of the tags or let a program such as Music Brains or Windows Media Player even a retrieve additional info from the internet, fill in the proper album, year, track, genre, composer, etc. Music Brains is available for the Mac, and, I, and he notes he hears that Easy Tag is another great tag fixer. And this is a this is a point now where you will probably leave a comment saying you use X, Y, or Z tag fixer or tag tag management tool. We've mentioned Media Monkey before, uh, at least for Windows users. Number two, normalize the volume. How many times have you been listening to a song at full blast because it's really quiet, only to have your ears shattered to pieces when the next track is queued up? To avoid this, use a program like MP3 Gain to normalize the volume of your songs. Keep in mind that some artists like to have certain songs on their album louder than others, so consider using Album Gain to hold those differences while you're still keeping the volume of all the tracks around the same levels. If you don't really share your music, pick a volume that you're comfortable with. MP3 gain defaults to 89 decibels, but he notes he prefers his music to be normalized at 92 decibels because they still don't clip from distortion and they're closer to the 95 decibels most retail CDs are recorded at. Plus your friends will probably be less annoyed if you decide to share some songs. So there's a good setting for you. Um, and normalization, as he noted, helps you know keep the, the volume right in the same area so you don't find yourself reaching for the knob. 
I mean, and by the knob, I mean like the volume knob. Sorry, I have a big volume knob. I kid you not, it's over here, it's huge. It's as big as my dog. Okay, so I use my dog as a volume knob, leave me alone. Number three, add album art. Most modern operating systems, yeah, like every one of them, and MP3 players have the ability to view album art. It makes finding your music very easy and you'll enjoy your music a lot more. iTunes and Windows Media Player can both add album art to tracks automatically. Personally, I just go to Amazon and use the high-res album art that they supply. There's a handful of fantastic tools, free tools, that will help you uh, match your music or audio or even video, for that matter, with album art. Number four, store the files, quote-unquote, properly. Be sure to store your music in some sort of organized folder structure. As your library grows, you'll thank yourself later. Personally, I have all my music stored in my music folder. Surprising. I then have about five different genre folders where I store my music. As far as file naming goes, I stick to the standard artist-title. That's what most people use. I already have the track number stored in the files and let my media players handle that. I mean, what it boils down to, in my opinion, is just being consistent with how you organize. Again, it's the reason why I like music subscriptions. I like pulling my music on demand. If I want to listen to The Doors, I click and I'm listening to The Doors. I want to listen to Moxie Fruvis. Click. I'm listening. Listening. Listen, I'm listening in the Moxie Fruvis. I don't know where the hell that came from. Number five. Fix up files as you download them. Once you've fixed up your library, which may take a few days, keep your music organized as you buy or download it. The nice thing about buying your music online is the fact that it's already properly tagged. That's not a huge issue, but it's very easy to fix up songs if they're on a CD or from a music blog. This step is really important as it's much easier to fix four or five tracks compared to a couple hundred. Hopefully this list helped everybody out there. I'd love to hear any other programs that people are using to keep their music organized. Uh, this is such an amazing, amazing top five list written very well, very clearly, uh, very organized, I would say. Um, you know, I, I know Amazon's got a pretty good service with MP3 files. I don't really purchase music that way, though. I'm a subscription kind of guy. I can't wait to see what Apple's going to do. Um, it'll be interesting, though, because... Uh, I tell you, if, if, if iTunes ever goes, I mean, if, if, you, if you said I could get unlimited music, you know, anytime, I don't have to buy the music, I could just rent it for like 20 bucks a month on my iPhone, I'd sign up, heartbeat. Not even, I wouldn't even question it, wouldn't even question it. It's just the way I do it. I mean, like, I rent my TV, I mean, I own the actual physical box, but I have to rent the service to get to, get to it. And even then, I still watch a lot of uh, TV online. I, you can watch South Park, full episodes of South Park on Comedy of Central's website. I watch um, pretty much all the episodes of Lost on ABC.com. I, I, I go directly to the websites. I sit through a small commercial. It's not that big a deal. I mean, when the commercial hits, I check my email, and then I come back. Or maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's, it's drawing my attention. That is the future, baby. And I'm telling you, it's getting seamless. And pretty soon, you'll be able to have the same thing here. Game over, baby. Game over. You guys saw me uh, watching TV on my uh, computer here. I was using Slingbox. I was connecting to a, a Comcast uh, DVR that was on the other side of my house. Watching The Last Starfighter. Beep. We die. If you've never seen that movie, you would not understand the last five seconds of this video. Hopefully you will understand what's going on with this list. If you have any other top fives, send them along. My email address is chris at perillo.com. If you know any other good music organization or media organization uh, software, tips, tricks, whatnot. Even if it has nothing to do with music or media, we love any kind of top five tips you might have to pass along to the rest of the community. We love you. We love you all equally. Some, well, maybe a little more than others, but uh, you, the person who's watching uh, this video right now, um, you are one of the good guys. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are not a daft punk, unless, of course, you like daft punk. Then you would be. You'd be a, a punk head, a dafter, a dafty punky, punky Brewster. I don't know where I'm going with this, but... Regardless, you, you can feel free to stop by the website. Uh, we're typically talking tech. Uh, people are asking questions, answering questions all day long, all night long, even when I'm not here. The people can't believe I got 500 people watching nothing. I mean, this is this, this is what happens. This is, this is me during the course of a day. 
and, and then people watch. They hang out with me. And every once in a while, I look in the chat room, answer a question, then I go right back. And then sometimes it's like this. For like hours on end. Seriously, this, this is like, if you see this, do not be surprised. Do not be alarmed. It's one of the reasons why I like putting the chat room right in the video. So you're welcome to join us anytime, day or night, at one place and one place alone. And that is live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.